Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. My computer just went off. Uh, I'd like to call to order our uh, council organizational meeting for Monday, December 2nd to order. And uh, would first like to acknowledge uh, we are holding this evening's meeting in the traditional territory of the Wasanch uh, peoples. And I would look for uh, approval of the agenda. Move adoption. Second. And I'd like to move an amendment that the mayor's address be uh, to, to follow the actual mayor appointments. Second. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries, thank you. I'd now like to call upon uh, Mr. Randy Humble to uh, provide recognition of long-term uh, long service employees. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and good evening, Mayor and Council. So I have to say that the annual recognition of Town of Sydney long-term employees and the opportunity that I'm given each and every year to recognize our staff is certainly a privilege and one that I truly enjoy each and every year. And perhaps I say this with a level of personal bias, um, but I believe that the Town of Sydney continues to be served by what I deem to be the finest collective of municipal public servants in the capital region. Sydney's employees are dedicated loyal, they're consummate professionals that are proud of the work they do and they sincerely care about the community in which they work as well as their employer, the town of Sydney. Now I have four employees from the town that I would like to acknowledge for their long-term service to the municipality here this evening. Now Mr. Mayor, if you would, if you could join me at the podium in congratulating the employees here this evening. The first employee that I would like to recognize is our driver services supervisor, Miss Leanne Gill. Leanne started with the town in 2007 as a driver services clerk and has been the department supervisor since 2013. So please join me in recognizing Miss Leanne Gill for her 10 years of service with the town of Sydney and I believe Leanne is here this evening. The next employee that I would like to recognize is one of our very own Parks Department staff, and that's Mr. John Cooper. John is a gardener in Parks where he has worked since 2011. Before that, he worked for a year in a laborer position. Please join me in recognizing Mr. John Cooper for his 10 years of service with the Town of Sydney. And unfortunately, John can't be with us this evening, but join me in congratulating him. The next staff person I would like to recognize here this evening is our safety coordinator, Mr. Rob Cook. Rob joined the Public Works Department in 2005 as a laborer, and in 2008, he was promoted to charge hand. Rob has held the safety coordinator position since 2016. Please join me in recognizing Mr. Rob Cook for his 15 years of service with the town. <laughs> So the next employee that is being recognized here this evening is one that I've had the pleasure of knowing and working with since the very beginning of my time with the town of Sydney. This person continues to be such an important asset to our finance department, where she provides the critical function of ensuring that we all get a paycheck each and every month. <laughs> that person is none other than our payroll and benefits administrator, Ms. Leanne Stanners. Now, Le Leanne, if you can believe it, began her career in the town of Sydney in 1994. So if you're doing the math, please join me in recognizing Ms. Leanne Stanners for her 25 years of service with the town of Sydney. Congratulations, Leanne. 
So, Mr. Mayor, that concludes my uh, long-term service recognition for employees. We're just going to turn the microphone just slightly here. I have the distinct pleasure. Can, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. I have the distinct pleasure of presenting uh, Mr. Andy Humble with his long service award for 20 years of service to the town of Sydney. Uh, Randy obtained his Bachelor of Arts degree in Urban Studies and Geography from the University of Winnipeg and then went on to obtain his Master's degree in City Planning from the University of Manitoba. He then joined, uh, started working for the town of Sydney in 1997 as an auxiliary planning technician and for five years from 1998 to 2003 he was a regular full-time municipal planner for the town. In 2004, uh, 2004 Randy, uh, his wife and family moved back to his hometown of Winnipeg and he worked as a municipal planner. Uh, but the island, uh, of course, had captivated he and his wife and family, and uh, they made a return to Sydney in 2005, and Randy took on the role of Director of Development Services. Randy was promoted to Chief Administrative Officer for the town in April of 2012, a role uh, you've successfully held since that time. I want to commend uh, Randy for, uh, for your work, uh, for working collaboratively with Council and senior staff, to ensure the town of Sydney and its 80-some staff maintains and en enhances its focus on efficient, cost-effective, and friendly service to residents, businesses, and community organizations. Throughout the past seven and a half years, Randy, as CEO, you've worked with three councils to achieve much in our community. And very importantly, you've pursued organizational excellence, one of our uh, strategic plan uh, overarching goals, and have, have a very professional team of public employees. Congratulations on 20 years of service. Uh, next on our agenda, we have um, uh, council and committee appointments, and I'd like to begin uh, with, uh, with uh, citizen appointments. We have several uh, uh, committees and, and, uh, and, uh, that uh, citizens are appointed to, and we're grateful for the commitment and, and dedication and time that uh, the citizens give to their appointments. I would like to reach, uh, while some of the individuals have their appointments continuing uh, through 2020, I would like to acknowledge... Um, all of the, um, the citizen appointments uh, this evening uh, and their respective, uh, respective bodies that they serve on. The first is the Advisory Planning Commission. Uh, the Advisory Planning Commission is, is a statutory requirement for all municipalities and uh, currently we have 10 members of the community serving um, and I would like to, uh, all, of, all, of, all 10 individuals are serving, or their term, two-year term uh, appointment continues until the end of December 20. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. John Crowhurst, Mr. Denny Jelena, uh, Mr. Patrick Colleen, Ms. Kelly Boltomer, uh, Bernard, uh, Bernadine Vandermeer, uh, Donald McNamara, uh, Clarence Bolt, uh, Douglas Watt, Don Carskadden, and Graydon Soule. This year, Council, uh, in one of its select committees, uh, re-established the, uh, the membership and the terms of reference for the Econo Economic Advisory Committee. It consists of 12 members. Uh, we have uh, Natalie King, who is, uh, is chair of the, uh, of the committee and represents the Sydney Business Improvement Association. Uh, Denny Warner participates, representing the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Rod Hunchuk from the Victoria Airport Authority represents that body. Uh, Alyssa Gerwing, from uh, well, rep uh, she's uh, assistant director at the uh, at Sydney Museum, but she's representing the CAG Sydney Event Advisory Group, and we have individuals from different sectors of our Sydney economy: Mr. Frank Austin, Jennifer Mitchell, Barbara Cena, Dina Matheson, Stasia Hartley, Anna Lee Armstrong, and two citizen uh, residents at large: uh, Mr. Doug Walker and David Cavalli. We have a board of variance, which is also a required statutory requirement. Uh, normally three members, currently two members are sitting on the, com on the committee. 
Uh, Mr. Bruce Nicholson um, is continuing his three-year appointment uh, that will continue to the end of, of 2020. And Mr. Uh, Tony uh, Lomas has uh, been appointed to a three-year appointment uh, to conclude in December of 2020. The Pen uh, Peninsula Recreation Committee, we're pleased to uh, that uh, uh, citizen Karen Frost, who's here this evening, continues in her appointment to expire at the end of 2020. And we, of course, we have two uh, CRD commissions, uh, one for the Sandwich Peninsula Water and one for the Sandwich Peninsula Wastewater Commission. And uh, we're pleased that uh, Mr. Michael Thompson, his appointments to both commissions uh, expire. He continues and expire in December of 2020. The Victoria, Authority, Victoria Airport Authority Board of Directors, we have two residents each serving a three-year term. And uh, I see Wendy Everson smiling and, and her appointment continues uh, to December 31st, 2020. And Mr. Uh, Charles Lavallo uh, appointment also continues to December 2020. We also have, uh, there is also the Victoria Airport Authority Noise Management Committee. And uh, we have a new appointment of Mr. Charles Wood and his appointment will continue until December 2020. And last uh, but not least, uh, I'm pleased to confirm that uh, our official town crier, Mr. Kenny Podmore, uh, his appointment continues as town crier uh, for the entire 2018 to 2022 term. Thank you. That concludes the uh, announcing the citizen appointments to continue and newly uh, appointed for 2020. Again, I would, would like to thank all of the uh, residents for, um, for their commitment, for their interest. Uh, to participating in, in a, a quite a diverse group of committees in our uh, in our community. If we could have a motion from the uh, council. Uh, I'll move that the appointments, uh, the citizen appointments be approved as presented. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries, thank you. I'd now like to uh, move to the council appointments. Um, this is a bit of a, a long list, but uh, uh, I would like to read it out. So while some appointments can continue and, and only some of the appointments are newly appointed, um, the seven of members of council uh, serving as council have, um, what's the total number now? Have 31 appointments to different boards, committees, and commissions uh, in Sydney, uh, on the peninsula, and at the CRD. And uh, I would like to read out those, um, those uh, liaison or member roles uh, each of us also serve as alternates to others uh, in the event one cannot make uh, a meeting. I won't read the, uh, the alternates out this evening, but I will re read the, um, the main liaison appointment or the, the main appointments. So on the advisory planning commission, while we do have citizen reps, we do have a councillor appointment uh, as liaison, and that's uh, Councillor Wainwright. Uh, the emergency program, uh, which is established by uh, statutory bylaw, uh, we have, uh, again, Councillor Wainwright serving as, as the member on that uh, committee. Uh, we also serve as Committee of the Whole, uh, the seven of us. Uh, and then again, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have a, a select committee that we've reestablished this year, the Economic Advisory Committee. And we do have a Council Liaison to that committee, uh, that is Councillor Rintoul. We also have uh, our representatives uh, to several external agencies. As uh, many will know, the Capital Regional District is a significant organization, uh, a group of organizations in, uh, in the region, and um, several are, there are several appointments to uh, different boards and commissions. Uh, there is the main Capital Regional District Board, uh, better known as the CRD Board, and I'll continue to serve as the member, uh, council member on that board. Uh, there's the Capital, Regional, uh, Capital Region Housing Corporation Board, and I'll continue to serve as director on that board. Uh, we have the Capital Regional Hospital District Board, and uh, that's a new full board this year, all 24 directors uh, serving on that board, and I'll be continuing as director. We have the C CRD Regional Water Supply Commission, kind of important for our drinking water uh, in the region, and uh, Councillor Duncan serves on that, uh, on that commission. Uh, there's the Municipal Insurance Association of BC, and uh, I, I am appointed to, uh, uh, to that association. Uh, there we have the CRD Climate Action Intermunicipal Task Force. And uh, Councillor Duncan uh, will continue to serve on that as a member. There is the Capital Regional District Regional Housing Trust Fund Commission. And Councillor Fallett will continue to serve on that commission. 
Uh, the CRD Peninsula Recreation Commission, while we do have a citizen appointment, we also have uh, myself and Councillor Red Tool who serve on that commission. We have the CRD, uh, Spanish Peninsula Water and Wastewater Commissions. Uh, we mentioned the citizen rep uh, earlier, but we also have myself and Councillor Wainwright uh, serving on those commissions, and Councillor Wainwright is, Wainwright is continuing to serve as chair of both those commissions. We have the Vancouver Island Regional Library Board, and Councillor Fallot uh, will continue serving on that uh, organization. There's the Capital Region Emergency Services Telecommunications, better known by its acronym CREST, and Councillor Rintoul will continue to serve as a director on their board. We have the Victoria Family Court and Youth Justice Committee, and Councillor Fallot uh, will serve on that. We have the Greater Victoria Labor Relations Association, and I sit, uh, I sit as a member on that, uh, on that body. We have the Victoria Airport Authority, VAA Airport Consultative Committee. Uh, along with a citizen rep, we have Council, uh, Council Rintoul uh, sitting on that. And there is the VAA Noise Management Committee with a citizen rep, but also a Council Liaison in Terry O'Keefe, and Councillor O'Keefe. We have the South Island Prosperity Partnership. Uh, they have a board, but they also have a Municipal Partners Committee, and I'm currently serving that role. And we have the Urban, Victoria Urban Reconciliation Dialogue, a new body constituted uh, approximately a year ago, and Councillor O'Keefe is serving in that role. We also have uh, representatives, uh, members and liaisons to, uh, to a number of local community organizations. There's the Sydney and North Saanich Ball uh, Facility Liaison Committee, and uh, Councillor Garnett and myself uh, sit on that committee. Uh, the Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, uh, Councillor O'Keefe, uh, will continue to serve as a liaison to that, to that uh, board. Uh, the Memorial Park Society, Councillor Rintoul, uh, will continue serving in a liaison role. The Society of Saanich Peninsula Museums, Councillor Garnett, will continue to serve. The New Marine Centre Society, better known as the Shaw Centre for the Sailor Sea, Councillor O'Keefe, will continue to serve. Art C Community Arts Council, the Saanich Peninsula, uh, Councillor Fallot will continue to serve. The Sydney Business Improvement Area Society, uh, Councillor O'Keefe will serve as liaison to that board. We have the RCMP and North Saanich Community Consultative Committee, and Councillor Garnett will continue to serve there. And we are pleased to announce a, a new appointment this year to uh, the Peninsula Stream Society, and Councillor Duncan will be serving to that, uh, to that body. That concludes the, uh, the announcements of, uh, of appointments to um, committees, commissions, and boards. If uh, we could have a resolution, please. I'll move, move that the, the council appointments. That the appointments be approved as presented. Second. Stereo. <laughs> All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. I'd now like to, uh, to move to uh, acting mayor appointments. So uh, what we do is uh, the six councillors, uh, my six councillor colleagues, each serve two months of the year as, uh, as acting mayor uh, in my absence, uh, or in some, in some instances to, uh, to represent council at uh, various functions that we're, uh, we're invited to. Um, and I'd just like to read those out uh, for a motion to approve. Um, uh, Councillor Garnett will serve as acting mayor in January and July. Uh, Councillor Duncan will serve uh, in February and August. Uh, Councillor Wainwright will serve in March and September. Councillor Fallot will serve in April and October. And Councillor Rintoul will serve in May and November. And Councillor O'Keefe will serve in June and December. I'll move that the appointment be approved as presented. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. I'd now like to give uh, my first annual mayor's address. And um, a good, a, again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome and, and thank you for coming this evening. It is indeed an honor to have served our fine community as mayor with my colleagues over the past year and to provide an annual address this evening. I'd like to begin my remarks by speaking of the ta a Sydney town crest that now hangs on the wall behind me. I'll follow that with highlights, uh, highlighting some of the important work council and staff have completed over the last year, 
and we'll move forward with in the next year. I'll then highlight several of the major events in our town and the community or and recognize community organizations that have been so active. And I'll, I'd like to finish this evening by acknowledging the outstanding contributions from three individuals who have served volunteer leadership roles in some of our most significant community organizations. Our history as a town, as many know, began in 1891 when members of the Brether family took 50 acres of their large local farm and had it registered as a town site. Had it subdivided into 21 blocks with three short avenues and six short streets, Sydney, Beacon, and Bazin Avenue, Bazin now being Bevan Avenue, and Front Street, which is now Eastview, Park, Eastview Road, uh, along, or Eastview Street, along with First through Fifth Streets between those avenues. So if you can envision it, it's, it's Sydney Avenue is just out our doors this way and just over two blocks to what is now Bevan Avenue and from the waterfront up to Fifth Street. They chose the name Sydney after previously named Sydney Island. The original town site was rather small, but the community gradually grew in size and activity. And in 1952, it was incorporated as the village of Sydney. And growing further, it was reincorporated as the town of Sydney nearly 53 years ago in January of 1967. Sydney's crest was designed by Mr. A.L.C. Atkinson, a retired professor of engineering whose hobby was heraldry. He had designed over 20 crests for various institutions and municipalities, including, in 1968, the crests for both North Saanich and Central Saanich. His original Sydney crest consisted of a shield, which many of you, I hope, can see, centered with the Royal Navy survey vessel HMS Plumper, which was commanded by Captain George Henry Richards. And it was in 1859 that Captain Richards surveyed and then named Sydney Channel and Sydney Island. The arrowhead on the upper right of the shield is Coast Salish, while the arrowhead on the left was from the Brether family coat of, family's coat of arms. The hands that are clasped together in the middle symbolize the friendship between the Wasonic First Nations and the settlers. The beacon in the crest represented the one that formerly marked the rocks off Sydney and after which Beacon Avenue is named, was named. The motto at the bottom of the crest, Ferris, Excleret, Nos, translate, let a beacon enlighten us. Almost 50 years ago to the day, on December 4th, 1969, council formally accepted this crest on behalf of the town of Sydney. A wood carving of the crest hung in the original council chamber, which was elsewhere in this building at the time. This chamber was an addition to the original building in 1995. And that original carving hung in this chamber also until it unfortunately became damaged. During the later 1990s, based on recommendations to council from the Environment Advisory Committee, the buffalo head ducks and arbutus leaves were added to the crest as supporters to represent the natural environment of Sydney. The buffalo head, of course, symbolizes Sydney's location by the sea, particularly with their primary habitat being the Shoal Harbour Migratory Bird Sanctuary. And arbutus trees, as we know, only grow in a small area along the southern BC coast and were a natural choice to represent the flora of Sydney. Many municipalities around the region and the province proudly display their crests in their council chambers. And I believe this acknowledgement of our past and establishment as a local government should be prom displayed prominently in Sydney's council chamber. The town's official flag, which consists of the shield that is seen in the crest and two blue waves, stand on the outside here at the front, at, th at the front of the chamber. They're not very well seen, but, uh, but they do exist. Both the revised town crest and the town flag were granted and sealed by the Chief Herald of Canada in the late 1990s. The authority to conduct the local government in British Columbia arises from the Provincial Ministry of Municipal Services and two long-established provincial acts, the Local Government Act and the Community Charter. There are, of course, other acts we abide by, but the province is represented in this chamber with the British Columbia flag. Of course, all residents who vote to elect council members and candidates seeking elected office must be Canadian citizens. Our local government, of course, also interacts with the senior level of government, and we have the Canadian flag also in our chambers. 
We also acknowledge that Canada is a constitutional monarchy and we have the Queen's portrait on display in the chamber. As I have stated in a previous council meeting, while our, our settler culture has lived in the area for over 150 years, the Wasanich people have lived here for thousands of years. We commissioned a carving by Sartlip First Nations and Coast Salish artist Chaz Elliott to represent our local government's connection to the local Wasonic nations. We appreciate we've been connected in the past and look forward to building our relationship in the future. We look forward to soon announcing a date in the new year to have the carving presented to council and the community here in council chambers. We also look forward to having a map of Sydney's original town site displayed here in the council chamber also in the new year. Moving on to some of our council and staff experience over the past year, just over a year ago, the newly elected council began the with five new members, four colleagues serving their first terms as councillor and myself as mayor. Through our many council and committee of the whole meetings, approximately four a month, along with the seven of us serving on over 40 appointments, or some 40 appointments to committees, boards and commissions, as earlier announced, we have seen and will continue to see remarkably wide ranging community business. Bringing our diverse individual experiences to our council member roles, we have gained valuable experience working together, working with senior staff and working in unique roles through our appointments and listening to the public. Before touching on some of the work completed in the town over the last year, I want to mention that 2019 was a transition year for several management positions here at the town. Sydney has many diverse businesses and nonprofit organizations. And one thing in common to all sectors in recent years has been the challenge to attract and retain new employees. The town of Sydney is a significant employer with some 80 staff providing important services to the community. And the organization is no different than others in needing to attract and retain excellent employees. In December 2018, our experienced Director of Development, Engineering, Public Works and Parks accepted the position of Chief Administrative Officer in North Saanich. In June of this year, we were very pleased to recruit and welcome Ms. Jen Clary into that director role. Our long-term, long-time manager of engineering retired in August, and we were pleased to promote Mr. Bruce DeMare from within into that role. The Planning and Development Services Department has been stretched in recent years with the volume of work in planning and development applications. Earlier this year, Council approved a comprehensive review of Sydney's official community plan. Knowing that would add significant work to the already busy department, our CAO, Mr. Hum Mr. Andy Humble, recommended and implemented promotions from within for Mr. Corey Newcomb as Senior Manager of Long Range Planning and for Ms. Allison Verhagen as Senior Manager of Current Planning. Several other positions were filled through recruiting and promotions from within during the year. Congratulations to all who took on new roles. One of the seven overarching goals in Council's strategic plan is organizational excellence. And I want to thank uh, CAO Mr. Humble and other members of the HR team for recruiting new talent to the town and for the development of current staff over time such that we are also continue to promote from within. Looking back at the full first full year of Council's term, I'd now like to give a snapshot of some of the initiatives and projects in no particular order, but demonstrating some of the important work in the range of community business that council, uh, the council uh, is attended to. Uh, in the early summer, we had the completion and opening of the new con community safety building. Uh, in the summer, we also had the completion and opening of the Aranza affordable housing project on 4th Street and the more recent opening of the new daycare center on the ground floor. A bit later, uh, we had the completion and opening of the 165 new employee parking spaces at the Mary Winspear Center. Sydney is now extremely busy with new residential and mixed use projects underway, particularly in the downtown and adjacent to the downtown. Earlier this year, staff updated and brought new measures in place for developers construction management plans. With the focus on keeping sidewalks, streets and parking as open as possible, both for pedestrian safety for the movement of people around the downtown. Planning for two significant and related environmental projects has moved forward. The Ray Creek Dam project, which is the responsibility of the town of Sydney, and the Ray Creek Pond remediation project, which Transport Canada has taken responsibility for. 
We'll continue to work with Transport Canada and local uh, organizations and residents to see these projects through to completion and we'll be holding a public information session in late January. Through the Vancouver Island Regional Library System, we had $1.5 million in upgrades, or sorry, $1.5 million in upgrades were completed to the Sydney North Saanich Library. Along with our North Saanich neighbors, we hosted a large forum of stakeholders to discuss a range of environmental and marine concerns associated with Seam Harbor and Roberts Bay including residents from the CM Harbor Task Force who organized the forum, the Friends of Shoal Harbor and the Roberts Bay Residents Association, RMLA, MP, and representatives from several government agencies. And we are working together to move those, uh, those issues forward. We supported the Roberts Bay Park cleanup with the Greater Victoria Green Team, a team of over 40 uh, citizens and some council members uh, uh, removed, uh, cleared over 10 cubic meters of invasive plants from the park. Uh, quite frankly, that was probably just the start, but it was a, a remarkable achievement. Council received detailed park plans for the three parks identified in the new Sydney, master, or Sydney Parks Master Plan, some of which will come forward in our 2020 budget deliberations. Council also received the completed urban forest strategy report and plan, with components from that also going forward to our next budget deliberations. We entered into a new agreement with ARTC, Arts Council of the Sandwich Peninsula for a revitalization, uh, revitalized uh, sculpture walk. And as mentioned earlier, we reestablished membership in terms of reference for the important Economic Advisory Committee. In conjunction with new provincial legislation regulating the sale of cannabis, can uh, Council adopted a new zoning bylaw to allow cannabis sales, retail sales in, in downtown Sydney. We began the comprehensive review of our official community plan with the provincially mandated first step of completing a housing needs assessment. The report came with 29 recommendations, some of which the town is already pursuing and others are being reviewed for implementation. The OCP process will continue with a report on next steps from staff presented at next week's Committee of the Whole meeting and will continue on for the next year uh, next, uh, through 2020 and 21. Staff are working on an agreement to have the town's public EV charging stations uh, at, uh, uh, under, new, uh, under new management, perhaps by a private company. And we've issued a contract for repairs uh, to the Beacon Wharf uh, to commence and be completed in 2020. Council hosted two meet and greet meetings here in the council chambers and will continue those th public engagements in 2020. I was pleased to present and take questions at a number of community organization functions during the year, including the chamber's mayor, mayor's breakfast, the BIA board, the Sydney Community Association, our two Rotary Service Clubs, Sydney, Sisters to City, Sydney, Sydney Sister Cities Association, and several others. And I look forward to continuing those as invited in 2020. We held a town hall for the Galleron residents on an important sidewalk and road upgrades project to the Galleron Road uh, corridor. And I look forward, forward to hosting a mayor's open town hall early in the new year. Council impl implemented its first strategic plan near the beginning of our term and last week announced the, the update to the plan for 2020 and beyond. In the update, we have maintained the six overarching goals, a complete community, community infrastructure, environmental stewardship, economic vibrancy, community engagement, organizational excellence, and we added a new overarching goal this year, community safety, health, and well-being. The strategic plan is now available on the town's website. I want to take this opportunity to thank staff and all departments for your dedication to the important work you do in providing services to the residents, businesses, and community organizations. And on behalf of Council and the community, I want to extend our sincere appreciation to the men and women serving in our three protective services. Thank you to Chief Brett Mickelson and your career colleagues and the dedicated volunteer firefighters. Thank you also for the important work your department does, along with others such as the Peninsula Measures Emergency Organization and Emergency Planning and Preparedness. Thank you to our Sydney North Saanich Detachment Commander Staff Sergeant Wayne Conley and your dedicated team in police services and your partnership in prevention, the RCMP auxiliaries, and the growth and success of the Block Watch program. 
And thank you to Mr. Rick, uh, Mr. Rick Harwood, Unit Chief for BC Ambulance Services, and your team of paramedics that provide vital services now from enhanced new facilities within our new community safety building. I'd like to touch on some of the major events that happened in our community this year. It's not a, a complete list that would take uh, far too long this evening. Um, but we have so many vibrant community organizations in our community. And um, the range of activities, it, it's, it's what makes our community uh, alive and vibrant and healthy. On January 1st last year, and of course it will be repeating at the end of uh, this coming month, we had the Polar Bear Swim by Peninsula Celebrations. Uh, from February 15th to 18th, we had the three days of, of Family Day uh, celebrations, which has become a huge event uh, in Sydney. March 31st, we opened the ferry between Friends, the Sydney Anacortes Ferry Run, and we had uh, Mayor of Anacortes join us for that. From April 11th to 14th, we had the Sid Sydney Literary Festival. April 14th, we had the Bazin Bay 5K Run. April 21st was the annual Easter egg hunt. In May, we had the, early May, we had the BC Floating Boat Show, setting records for attendance. May 4th, uh, well, uh, the, uh, during that same time, the plain air artists were, uh, were uh, out in public at the boat show. May 25th and 26th, we had the National Stand Up Paddleboard Championships. And May 31st to June 1st, we had the new event in town, the Folk and Fiddle Festival. We continued, uh, which we have for several years, Access Awareness Day in early June. Uh, in June 6th, we had the Sydney Street Market, and um, we celebrated the 20th anniversary this year of the annual Thursday Night Markets, uh, 13 of which uh, uh, occur each year and thousands attend. On June 8th, uh, the Shaw Centre for the Solar sea, Sailor Sea organized World, World Oceans Day event down in Beacon Park. And we had the spring, the spring Studio Tour, the third annual Vancouver Island Comic Con, and June 21st was June 21st was National Peop National Indigenous Indigenous Peoples Day, and we had the grand opening of the Chief Dan George exhibit at the Sydney Museum. June 30th to July 1st is traditionally our Sydney Days and Canada Day activities, a whole host of activities. But new this year was the Community Safety Building Open House, and we had thousands attend uh, that open house. Uh, we know because we served thousands of servings of ice cream. Uh, and uh, the RCMP had their first uh, crime prevention open house at the Mary Winspear Center in the Bodine Hall, which was a great success. In July and August, we had the tradition of our Summer Sounds concert series put on by Peninsula Celebrations each Sunday. And we also had the open, uh, open air library uh, at Iroquois Park. July 7th, the Peninsula Hospital Foundation uh, held its annual Bed Races on Beacon as a fundraiser, a huge success as a fundraiser. In August, we had the Torque Masters Auto Extravaganza, and we had later in August, we had the Sailor Sea Lantern Festival, a hugely attended event this year on the waterfront. On October 3rd, we had the Tour Toured Rock uh, Cancer, uh, cancer uh, Fundraiser come to Sydney. September 22nd, we had our second, second annual Sydney Seaside 5K and 8K run. October 18th to 20th, we had the Sydney Fine Art Show. I'm sorry I've lost track. I think it must be about 15 years that the art show has uh, been a tremendous success. We later had the fall studio tour, and of course on August 31st, we've now built up a tremendous Treat Street Halloween event, closing the streets for four blocks and seeing our neighbors and friends get dressed up. November 11th was our uh, Remembrance Day ceremonies. November, 30, uh, November 23rd, just a week ago Saturday, was the Sydney Merchants Open House in downtown Sydney, a huge success. The next day we had breakfast with Santa, and at the museum from December 1st to 31st is the teddy bear exhibit. Uh, yesterday, uh, Peninsula Celebrations and Parade Marshal Cam McClellan put on a great Signal Sparkles Christmas Parade. And on December 25th, we'll have our tradition of the community Christmas dinner at the Mary Winspear Center. As I say, I could go on reading, and I'm sorry if I missed uh, events that uh, those in attendance helped organize and, and participate in that just this year. But it just helps to demonstrate um, not only how vibrant our community is today, but in my inaugural address last year, I, I talked about sense of place. And I talked about when my wife and I 
when her young daughter moved here in 2001. And the number of new initiatives, the new facilities we have in our community and the number of new events and initiatives that have grown over the, over the years. And um, we continue to have increased success and I'm, I'm sure we look forward to even uh, more events and larger events in the future. I'd like to take this moment um, to, just, uh, to just mention the organizations and individuals we extended invitations to, to give you a range that these events and these activities that happen in our community. Um, yes, the town of Sydney through our $20 million budget process that we uh, do each year provide nearly a million dollars to many community organizations and that assists in the activities that they do. But really it's the individuals, the uh, volunteer board of directors, uh, the volunteers that serve the public uh, or engage the public in those organizations that really make the difference in our community. And so I'd just like to, uh, to give a sense and, and at the same time give recognition with a group of community leaders. I think it's important for uh, community leaders to, to also acknowledge fellow community leaders and their activities in our community. We have the 440, 443 Maritime Helicopter Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Ryan Sexsmith, and I'll ask that if you are in, in attendance this evening to just give us a wave. <laughs> and also from uh, 44 Maritime Helicopter Squadron, uh, we have uh, Honorary Colonel Mike Sudo. Uh, our Access Awareness Committee, which has been going, I think, at least eight or nine years. Um, uh, Brian Losey, Pele Pillay, uh, Judy Peterson from Sydney All Care, uh, the Shoal Centre, many people involved to make that event a success each year. Uh, our Anavets, uh, Anavets Sydney Unit number 302, we have President Joanna Emmerich here uh, this evening. Thank you, Joanna, for the great work that your organization done in, is in raising friends and contributing in the community. The BC Avi Aviation Museum, President David Jackson. Well, the Aviation Museum is just across the border a little bit. It, uh, it, it serves our larger community and does an outstanding job. Their open house this year was truly remarkable. Uh, Beacon Community Services, uh, uh, Chair uh, Brian Walker, uh, uh, sorry, Brian Waller. Uh, Beacon Community Services, as I think every resident knows, provides a huge range of social and employment services, and not only our community, but beyond uh, the Peninsula community. The Arts C Community Arts Council of Centre's Peninsula, uh, President Diane Thorpe, uh, Sculpture Walk Chair uh, Wayne McNiven. Uh, I first met Diane Thorpe, I think 20 years ago, uh, when she was involved, and while she has stepped back, she's uh, come back to lead the organization and continue with these very successful events, such as the um, Sydney Fine Arts Show. The Mary Winspear Community Center uh, uh, Board Chair Sheila Fay, uh, welcome this evening, and uh, Executive Director uh, Brad Edgett. I'll be speaking more, a little bit more about the uh, Memorial Park Society later. Our Panorama Recreation Center, uh, we have um, the Commission Chair Wayne Ruffle and uh, Lorraine Brewster, Senior Manager. The Panorama, Re Panorama Recreation Center is, is, is truly remarkable, or sorry, uh, Peninsula Recreation is truly remarkable in the recreation and uh, rec recreation programs that pr they provide, not only, at, not only at Panorama Recreation Center, but at Green Glade, Green, Green Glade Elementary School, Sydney North Saanich Middle School, and at the Community Center in Central Saanich. Peninsula Celebration Society, thank you, uh, President Marilyn Loveless. Uh, your organization is amazing and has done so much in the community. And to the Peninsula Streams, to both Chair Mary Haig Brown and Executive Coordinator Ian Bruce, we're pleased to have appointed a liaison to your committee and the good work that you do in our community. We have several service uh, clubs that do uh, great things in our community. We have the Kiwanis Club and current president Ken Smith. Uh, we have uh, Rotary Club of Sydney, current president John Joint, and the Rotary Club, Club of Sydney by the Sea and current president Ian Brown. Royal Canadian Legion Branch 37, president Mary Tretman, of 
course, do the, do the annual poppy campaign, which is so important to vets and their families. And we have the Sandwich Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, President, current President Andy Hook, and Executive Director Denny Warden, Warner. Not only do they provide support to the, to the business community, but they're also involved in many other community uh, functions and events. The Sydney Museum, uh, President Richard Novick and uh, Executive Director Peter Garnham. Thank you for the outstanding things you do. You're the only organization, the only, yes, I believe you're the only organization operating from a basement in Sydney. <laughs> and uh, while I, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> Can we fix that? Well, I wanted to say that uh, when I served on the board in the early 2000s, it was, it was just an idea I tossed out that uh, the museum rise above ground. But uh, the center has expanded over the years and had tremendous success. And um, congratulations to, uh, to the board and the staff. Uh, the Shaw, Shaw Center for the Salish Sea, uh, incoming President Janine Morris and uh, Executive Director Pauline Finn. Welcome and thank you for welcoming 70,000 visitors to the center each year. The Shoal Center uh, to Executive Director Glennis Cavers and the awesome programs that they run at the Shoal Center. It almost seems like 24 hours a day there. To the Sydney BIA, uh, uh, current President Brad Edgett and Executive Director Morgan Shaw. Uh, the, the B I will be speaking to the BIA a bit later as well. The Sydney Community Association, current President Steve Duck. Um, uh, I did uh, forget one uh, service club, the Sydney Lions Club, and current President Bob Orchard. And of course, the Lions Club has been hugely supportive of the Sydney Lions Food Bank. And we also thank Executive Director Bev Elder for the good work she does in our community. The Sydney Sister Cities Committee, uh, President Sharon Stoneman. We have three sister cities relationships uh, around the world. And we were very pleased to receive uh, 10 students, uh, or Sydney Sister Cities, organized an awesome visit for 10 um, students, teenage students, from uh, Nimi, Japan earlier this year. Uh, touched on earlier, the Sydney Street Market. Congratulations to Laurie McDermott, market coordinator for 20 years. Uh, you were involved in the early days, and the market has, has grown to be a tremendous and consistent success. And to the Victoria Airport Authority, the current board chair Gordon Safrick and current president and CEO uh, Jeff Dixon, we thank you for the, being an economic engine in our community, but also the community supports. You support many community organizations financially. And Washington State Ferries, I um, want to thank um, Christian Olson of Flair Hospitality. Um, I was saddened to learn that uh, Christian and Patty Olson's father, Ron Olson, passed away uh, recently. Um, Ron Olson was a, was a true entrepreneur in the town of Sydney, establishing a Flair Hospitality um, decades ago uh, to serve um, Washington State and Sydney in the Sydney Anacortes Ferry Run, and he will be sadly missed. A couple of late minute additions are the Santa Peninsula Hospital Foundation. Uh, current chair, uh, Shelley Mann, uh, past chair uh, this year, Paul Hames, and uh, president and CEO, Karen Morgan. Uh, the Santa Cruz Peninsula Hospital Down Foundation has done a remarkable job for the hospital, but as I think many in the community know, the Santa Cruz Peninsula Hospital Foundation made a dramatic change uh, just a short, while, a short number of years ago to establish a new nonprofit society, Shoreline Medical Society, and they are currently operating a very large clinic uh, in Sydney uh, and another clinic in Central Saanich which opened earlier this year. Uh, Co-chair of, of Shoreline Medical, co-chairs of, of Shoreline Medical Society are, are uh, Adele Henley and Elizabeth Rhodes and um, of course access to physicians has been a very large issue for residents across the province and across our community and the mayors of the Capital Regional District have uh, taken initiative to hold a series of meetings this year uh, with Vancouver Island Health Authority, or Vancouver Island Health Association, with the uh, Division of South Island Family uh, Practitioners, and at the UBCM uh, Municipal uh, Convention in, in uh, Vancouver in the fall, uh, all of the mayors met with the Minister of Health 
and his colleagues to discuss our concerns and ways forward to improve access to health care. It's come out in all of those meetings that Shoreline Medical is very unique, not only in the Capital Regional District, but on Vancouver Island in the province as a model to efficiently have physicians not concerned with operating and having to invest in the infrastructure of operating their own offices and running their own businesses, but be able to spend the maximum amount of time uh, attending to, to uh, their patients, uh, both at the clinic and serving uh, at the Sandwich Peninsula Hospital. So thank you again to everyone. I think uh, if everyone would like to give each other a round of applause, I was very pleased to recognize you. <laughs> you know, I have to say, some of these organizations actually, you know, only sprung up a short while ago in, in Sydney's long history. And, and uh, I, I keep wondering, what will be the next, you know, dynamic thing that happens in Sydney? I would like to conclude this evening, and I'm going to need my computer for this, with recognizing three individuals who have uh, made huge contributions um, to, the signif to significant uh, community organizations. The first is uh, Mr. Richard Paquette, who unfortunately couldn't be with us this evening. But Richard Paquette was uh, MPS board, uh, served on the MPS board from 2011 to 2019 and he served as president from 2013 to 2019. Many will know that Richard Paquette had a distinguished career in the leadership of airports and was president and CBO of the Victoria Airport Authority for 11 years until retiring at the end of 2010. Mr. Paquette oversaw tremendous growth in airline service and passengers served at the Victoria Airport, as well as overseeing over $80 million in capital improvements at the airport during his tenure. Under Mr. Paquette, the Victoria Airport Authority earned a fine reputation for financially supporting many community organization initiatives. Of course, Mr. Paquette didn't rest long after retiring at the end of 2010, joining, as I mentioned, the MPS board in 2011 and serving until retiring from that role earlier this year. Brad Edgett, executive director and board colleagues, remember Mr. Paquette's significant and long-lasting achievement. Most significant and long-lasting achievement is guiding the MPS to successfully navigate changes to the organization's complex trust agreement through the Supreme Court of British Columbia. I will just summarize very quickly that, again, having served on the MPS board uh, in the early 2000s, it's a very complex agreement. It's unique in Canada, and Mr. Paquette uh, was, was uh, vitally important in seeing uh, the board and uh, executive move through that uh, process. And the trust changes have, have and will allow MPS to move forward on many fronts. Richard Paquette was also instrumental in working with the Town of Sydney for the long-term lease for the easement for the Community Safety Building Access Road and the joint parking lot at the centre, which has led to the creation of 165 new parking spaces opened earlier this year. Working with the MPS Board and Executive Director Brad Edgett, the Mary Winspear Centre grew and flourished in the range and number of events held in the various facilities at the Mary Winspear Centre. And during his leadership, the centre increased its already popular profile in the community and achieved a stronger financial position. While he's not here this evening, he may want to look in on the video. So please join me in congratulating Richard Paquette and his service to the community. The next two individuals that I want to acknowledge and recognize, I haven't made a lot of notes because I've known them extremely well um, over the last 20 years. Uh, they actually came to the community uh, four or five years before I did. And that is um, uh, Susan Samosco and um, husband uh, Graham Debling. And uh, I'll start with, uh, with, uh, with you, Mr. Debling. Um, uh, Graham and, and Susan came to Sydney in 1997. Uh, both had their international consulting uh, businesses uh, that interacted with, uh, uh, with organizations, improving organizational excellence and, and other consulting uh, around the globe, and uh, chose to base uh, their businesses in Sydney. But upon arriving in uh, 1977, immediately became involved in um, community volunteerism. Uh, 
uh, Graham Debling uh, and Susan actually began. Um, Mayor Don Amos uh, uh, serving in, uh, bef uh, prior to, uh, to 2000 uh, began a process for the establishment uh, of what became uh, a long uh, standing success, the Community Development Office. Uh, and um, that Community Development Office is now kind of embraced within the Sydney Business Improvement Association, which I'll come to a little later. Uh, but Graham and Susan were involved in those, in those early years with other community leaders. Graham then went on to serve with four years with the Sandwich Peninsula Chamber of Commerce on their board. Uh, and then uh, a bit after that, he served uh, on uh, uh, former mayor Larry Cross uh, as, as, uh, in his term as uh, on the Community Development Commission and he chaired that commission and moved a number of important initiatives forward uh, during his, his year of service. Graham also spent six uh, years on the um, Sydney Museum Board, two years as treasurer and four years as president. And it was during that term, uh, the latter part of that term, that the S Sydney Museum made its final expansion into, um, into one other organization that was doing business in a basement at the time, uh, uh, Clive Tanner's uh, History Bookstore. Uh, but the museum expanded uh, quite successfully into that space and as well, uh, Graham steered, uh, worked with the board and, and, uh, and leadership in the town of Sydney to help for the purchase of, those, uh, of that space. And so the town is the, um, does own all of the space uh, in the basement of the museum and has a very flourishing museum. Uh, Graham then went on to uh, join the, uh, the board of the Shaw Center for the Salish Sea from 2014 to 2019. Uh, in his final two years, he served as president, and um, I have to say that uh, uh, the center for the, the Shaw Center for the Salish Sea is one of the most complex organizations. I will, I'll say businesses, but organizations to operate. And um, in conversation with Graham recently, we we talked about that complexity. Uh, it would be mind-boggling to describe how many gallons or liters of salt water uh, course uh, through. Uh, the facilities at the center each day, 24 hours a day, to keep the some 3,000 what I call critters, uh, marine uh, marine critters, uh, alive. And um, so it's complex uh, uh, in, in, in that way, um, but it serves a very diverse, uh, it serves our local community, it serves visitors, um, and uh, during some of the challenges that the Shaw Center experienced, uh, over the years, uh, while it had tremendous successes, it really had to revisit its uh, what I'll call physical plant, its engineering uh, within the center. It had to look at its organizational structure and its programs. And uh, Graham Debling did a terrific job in uh, engaging consultants, working with the town of Sydney, uh, to produce important reports that later came forward to council that uh, laid out important choices for council to make and earlier this year, Council, through its budget deliberations, did grant significantly increased funding to support the center. We think it's important that the 70,000 visitors to the center continue to come and the good things that the Shaw Center does. I didn't mention, Graham, that you also participated in Sister City uh, Society with, uh, with Susan, but uh, we thank you for that. So, Graham, you've had a long and distinguished uh, community service career, and we, we thank you for that very much. And lastly, Susan Samosko with no notes. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, Susan came to the community in, with her husband, uh, Graham, in, in, 2000 and, er, in 1997 and, and contributed. And, and to begin to describe all of the activities, because it just wasn't with uh, community organizations that, uh, that Susan Samosko served. Uh, Susan Samosko took on many unique projects uh, within the community, uh, some working with the town of Sydney, some working with other community organizations, uh, and um, it would be hard to, to describe all of that work, but it was important and often behind the scenes work uh, that Susan Samosko did. Among uh, one of uh, Susan's very important uh, accomplishments was uh, in the earlier 2000s, the Sydney Sister Cities Association uh, were having challenges. I think it might have been down to about one active member, <laughs> yeah. zero active members. And um, 
And, uh, and Susan, uh, in working with the, uh, the Business Association of the Day and the Town of Sydney and um, uh, twisting the arms of a number of other uh, of volunteers, um, rejuvenated that, uh, that organization and it's a tremendous success today uh, as evidenced, as I mentioned earlier, with the terrific uh, visit we had from 10 students uh, from Nimi, Japan and the experience that they were able to gain in our, in our community and another culture. I think, uh, to my mind, Susan's uh, largest contribution to the community was uh, being involved with the Sydney Business Improvement Association. Sydney Business, or, or business Improvement Associations uh, were invented in Ontario in the 1980s and have become a success around the globe for business districts, large and small. There are some 65 business improvement uh, areas in the province of British Columbia. Uh, the Sydney BIA was, I think, about the 60th to uh, to uh, establish itself. And while there was a board and a society uh, that worked together for well over a year to help establish the BIA, um, the BIA receives its, uh, while, the, while a, a board and a society can form, it is only empowered by a municipal bylaw from council. And that's uh, based on provincial uh, regulation, um, and rightfully so. It, it uh, leads to, uh, to the highest level of accountability. And um, shortly after the, the BIA became established by uh, Town of Sydney bylaw in January of 2013, uh, Susan Samasco um, uh, joined the board and was later, later elected to the board in, uh, 2000 and at the AGM in September of 2013. But one of the larger, uh, uh, th there's really two parts to the Sydney Business Improvement Association. The mandate, the original mandate and still the core mandate of the business association is to increase footsteps to the sound town of Sydney, particularly the down, downtown Sydney. And um, the marketing programs uh, that uh, the organization, the, the organization raises levy through property taxes from the, from the local businesses. And um, uh, the marketing and promotion programs that the BIA uh, put into effect uh, during Susan's leadership were remarkable. And it had the benefit of also increasing attendance to our many community events. When we talk about events like Tree Street and Family Day, those events didn't exist in the town before the BIA or the establishment of the Sydney Event Advisory Group. The Sydney Event Advisory Group was an idea that came to the fore when Graham Debling was chair of the Community Development Commission back in the 213-214 period, or 212-213 period. And when uh, Susan was able to take that idea and work with the town of Sydney and help establish a memorandum of understanding that resulted in additional funding from the town of Sydney to the BIA such that there was an event liaison coordinator position created and Donna Petrie was the first person to take that role on and was extremely successful. And that group involved many of you in the room today. The aquarium, the museum, the chamber, the, B the BIA, the sister cities, the summer markets, peninsula celebrations. And really it, it, it was, it's an exchange of information and a synergy that was created under Susan's leadership that led to existing events becoming more successful. The Sydney Fine Arts Show was already successful, but it became more successful with the marketing and promotion and the, the synergy that happened in the Sydney Event Advisory Group. I should also men mention the Arts Council of the Sandwich Peninsula participating. And um, so it, it was a unique body and Susan chaired it from its inception in uh, 2013 until she retired as president of the board uh, earlier this year. And um, I think uh, an, on, on a, in a number of ways, uh, Susan's contributions were remarkable as chair of SEAG, as chair of the BIA, and it's business it did on with member, member levies in uh, promoting the town. Um, but very importantly, the provincial legislation requires that all businesses operating in the geographic location of the business improvement area, and that's about 370 businesses, 75 businesses in downtown Sydney, are voting members, automatically voting members of the BIA. And each property owner, each commercial property owner they may own and operate their business, but they may just be a landlord and, and lease out there, are also voting members. But the provincial legislation says that you have to, have to activate an individual business or an individual property owner's membership for them to have a vote 
in the organization and, part and to participate. And it doesn't matter how many commercial properties you own or how many businesses you operate, you only get one vote. And um, quite frankly, the organization struggled in the first year to activate as many members as we would like. And Susan Samosco, working with Donna Petrie, really activated the membership, and, and which resulted in enormous collaboration amongst businesses and amongst property owners uh, in the community, and I think has been uh, integral to the success of, of, of the organization. Uh, and lastly, I want to, uh, I want to thank Susan, um, uh, Mary Winspear Executive Director Brad Edget, and myself and Susan uh, were involved in the recruiting I think, uh, and Randy, uh, CAO Randy Humble were involved in the recruiting of Donna Petrie. I think everybody in this room knows of the contributions that Donna Petrie made to our community uh, over five or six years. Uh, she sadly missed uh, working for the competition, I'll call it, in Langford. Um, but uh, Susan was a true mentor of, of Donna Petrie uh, when she joined the organization. And um, we want to thank, uh, thank Susan for that. So. Please join me in congratulating Susan on her lengthy career. So thank you all again for attending this evening. I, uh, I think it's important to recognize uh, participation and I'm feeling so bad right now because I've been looking her way all evening and I haven't recognized former Sydney Mayor, Mayor Norma Seeley. Norma, thanks for coming this evening. But thank you for coming this evening. We're happy uh, if you want to stay and enjoy some of the refreshments and, uh, and little bits uh, to, uh, to eat. Uh, I would now like to ask council for a motion. Move adjournment. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much.